Why no scientist wants to explore the Marina Trench again? There is a place deep in the ocean where pressure is 1,000 times stronger than that we're used to at the surface. This force is enough to turn an unprotected human into dust instantly. Well, what? maybe more like mud. Anyway, that's why explorers need some serious preparation and equipment to survive in such extreme conditions down in the Mariana Trench. Uh, Mariana it is Trench. as wide as 20 national malls in Washington, D.C., and about one-fifth as long as the diameter of Earth. Uh, wait, wait. One fifth? People who went all the way down describe it as a chilly, quiet, and very peaceful place. They saw a bright blanket of red and yellow rocky outcrops, and there was a whole variety of unique, small, translucent animals. Ah! Uh? The popular myth. Wait, so people have been down at the bottom then? Is that more people have gone to the moon than to this deepest place on Earth is not true, though. In total, 24 humans flew to the moon, and at least 27 brave souls dove down to the Mariana Trench. Most of them were explorers and not proper scientists. Wait, they what just go there for the thrills and also to collect video evidence of different wildlife, Wait, geological formations, and human-made objects. Yo, that would be so scary, bro. Imagine, like, you're, you're, you're in this. I get the bottom of the ocean and you just see like the biggest fucking animal you've ever seen in your life. Like it is hideous, gross, massive. Like, oh my God, like, yo, it just eats up the boat. Different wildlife, geological formations, and human made objects. Humans started traveling around space and into the ocean depths at around the same time. The first moon landing was in 1969. And the first person to go down the Challenger Deep, the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, did so in 1960. This unusual location got its name after the British ship HMS Challenger, which first located this massive drop in the ocean floor at the end of the 19th century. It would take eight more decades before the first human went Chat. down to it. Chat, how do we know that is the deepest point in the ocean? As somebody ran across the whole ocean, feeling the floor. Like, you don't exactly know where. Oh, sonar. Oh. They got machines that can lock. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll just stop talking. Explorers didn't manage to do it in a conventional submarine. They used a type you of submersible there, called a bath escape. The Swiss oceanographer Auguste Picard designed his own in 1953. Seven years later, the submersible managed to do the impossible. It had reached a depth of nearly 36,000 feet. But what explorers saw was merely a fraction of the trench's full size. The fact that it is so huge of the Mariana Trench is just one of the reasons why it's mostly unexplored today. The absence of light is another major issue. Sunlight is incapable of reaching such profound depths, so the entire trench from top to bottom lies in absolute darkness. Oh, that's horrible. Because of such conditions, the ecosystem is a lot different than the shallower regions of the Pacific. This puts immense pressure on marine wildlife. Yeah, the pun is intended. Another reason why it's so challenging to survive there is the temperature. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. At the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the ocean is just a couple of degrees above freezing. One of the factors that hasn't let this area turn into a giant icicle is the fact that salt water has a slightly lower freezing point. The other reason is geothermal energy that warms the ground at the bottom of these just enough for it not to freeze. That's why submersibles need to have proper insulation to navigate these icy conditions. Yo, how would, how would they be living things in this though? Like, you said, like, if a human was at the bottom of there, the pressure would just, like, turn us into dust, yeah? So how is there anything living there? When they reached the bottom to navigate these icy conditions. When they reach the bottom, researchers find out that this desolate and harsh climate is home to several animal species. They encountered arrow-tooth eels, snailfish, 
and oh, spoon what are the arrow tooth oh, eels. What is that? Wait, what is this? It looks like a gas burner. You know, like a Bunsen burner that you get at school and you turn it up. But that's what it looks like. Snailfish and spoon. What is that? That's a penis. That is a penis. You ain't fat a fish, mate. Someone's chopped off the penis and that's there. This that's desolate and harsh climate is home to several animal species. They encountered arrow-tooth eels, snailfish, uh. and spoonworms at various depths. There were even strange-looking translucent sea cucumbers what? and shrimp-like amphipods. The biggest surprise was microbial mats thriving on methane and hydrogen from the mud. Among Wait, if it isn't methane a drug? Wait, are the fish getting high? <laughs> Is methane a drug? Oh, it's a gas. Oh, methane gas. Meth drug. Now, I'm thinking of a different meth. <laughs> Among the species, the Mariana snailfish looks like a master of the environment uh. that can go farther and deeper into the trench to feed on prey than its competitors. Despite its seemingly fragile appearance, the snailfish has adapted to withstand extreme pressures, Ow. a superpower it wouldn't be able to survive without. The exotic life forms that live deep down aren't normal sized, since deep sea gigantism makes them grow significantly larger than their counterparts in other ecosystems. One example is the giant tube worm, which can be six feet long. What the Science fuck is had that? a hard time explaining the exact cause of this form of gigantism. Thermal vents are just one of the possible explanations. All of these factors might help explain the huge time gap in researching the Mariana Trench. The first successful dive after the 1960 expedition came only in 2012. That's when the famous Canadian film director James Cameron went down in the Deep Sea Challenger. Because few scientists have gone that deep before or after Cameron, there is no map of the deepest point on our planet. We know very little about the oceans that cover two-thirds of the Earth's surface. Researchers have mapped out only 5% of them so far. 5%?! Science still has a lot to discover. Wait, 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 so we've only discovered 5% of our own ocean. We are slacking. We are slacking. And I thought we we're gonna colonize planets in my lifetime. Bro, we didn't even colonize our fucking ocean. Yo. Mapped out only 5% of them so far. Science still has a lot to discover in the Mariana Trench and other unexplored places on our planet. The Amazon rainforest stands as the best example of the world's most unexplored regions. The list of reasons why this part of South America is unknown starts with its wildlife. Jaguars, anacondas, piranhas, black caimans, and Brazilian wandering spiders uh. are just some of the creatures that pose a risk for researchers. So, we're too, relentless year so pretty much we can't explore these areas because we're too much of pusses. Yo, you want to go and explore it, researchers? Go and take an AK-47 with about 50 people, right? There you can you can explore it, mate. Brown rainfall induces heavy flooding. Add to all this some treacherous river currents, and you can see why scientists have mapped such a small percentage of the Amazon to date. In just one region of Brazil, near okay, Peru, now. there are at least 14 tribes that have never had contact with the outside world. What? Hey, listen, researchers can't go there, but these tribesmen can. We'll blend in. Become one of the tribesmen then, you dumb idiot. If they don't eat you. The national authorities intend to keep it that way. Isolation of these indigenous people is the best way to protect their future. The same goes for a remote island in the Indian Ocean. Uh, I've heard about this one. After the tragic tsunami of 2004, helicopters flew over North Sentinel Island to make sure its inhabitants were alive and well. Meanwhile, the Sentinelese weren't thrilled. They took up bows and arrows to drive away the unwanted visitors. This tribe is one of the last uncontacted tribes Man. on Earth. Yo, I wonder what they was thinking when they seen the helicopter. Like, what do you think? Do, do you think like we're like gods or something? 
Although anthropologists and filmmakers visited the island in the late 1960s, we still don't oh, really? know much about its indigenous population. It sits a long way off any shipping lanes in the Bay of Bengal. Rarifo is an animal. North Sentinel has no natural harbor, and it's surrounded by a shallow reef. This makes access to the island possible only by boat. The Indian officials who lay claim to the island have prohibited outsiders from visiting the island for safety reasons. But, uh, yeah, the we estimates would kill on how many people diseases. inhabit the island vary significantly. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. The I ain't gonna lie. That's a beautiful fucking island, mate. That's, bro, I'd be, I'd be defending that as well if I was them. You ain't coming and taking my island. I know what you do with other islands. You turn it into a fucking tourist attraction and then you ruin it. That's stunning me. I'll be defending that. The estimates on how many people inhabit the island vary significantly, from as few as 15 to as many as 500. The island is not tiny. It's about five times as big as London's Heathrow Airport. Apart from occasional contact during the past two centuries, the Sentinelese must have been isolated for a long time. They are related to other indigenous groups in the Andaman Islands but their neighbors cannot understand a word of their language. Oh, damn. The continent of Antarctica has no permanent human settlements at all. The only people who periodically live there are international scientists. This vast expanse of ice and snow, roughly the size of the United States and Mexico combined, still has many regions where humans haven't set foot. Satellite imagery and photos that NASA's aircraft made from the air have mapped out the entire continent. Wait, so, wait, is that how big it is? Is it's the same it's the same size as United States and Mexico combined. It's that big. Holy fuck. Photos that NASA's aircraft made from the air have mapped out the entire continent. So we know where to go, but it's not that easy. The reason for this are all the adjectives that go with Antarctica. It is the coldest, windiest, driest, and brightest of the seven continents. This makes it virtually unlivable. More than 99% of its surface is covered with a permanent sheet of ice. Its thickness ranges from one oh, mile to penguins. as many as three miles in some places. That's half the height of Mount Everest. Mad. Now the Himalayan range contains the world's tallest unclimbed mountain. It is also the tallest mountain in Bhutan. In the local language, the mountain's name translates as White Peak of the Three Spiritual Brothers. Out of respect for the spiritual beliefs of the local population, national authorities restricted and then completely banned mountaineering at the Wait, beginning I, of the 21st century. Chat, I'm a bit confused. Did I go on a different video? Because what has this got to do with the Marina Trench? What? It I thought I had to double check. We're still on the same video. Century. To this day, there is no evidence that any climber has ever managed to successfully reach the summit of this mysterious mountain. Bro, I was a bit confused. I, I think I'm, I, I thought I accidentally clicked on a different video. 